Hey guys, so in this video we are going to talk about dependencies, so let's get into it. Now, what is a dependency? You may have heard this word thrown around quite a bit in the programming world. And the reason why this is such a big word is because dependencies are, quite frankly, so common that almost... Well, let's just say that the majority of projects out there have a dependency. Now, a dependency can be many things, but traditionally what it means is that you have a so-called third-party library or third-party piece of software. In other words, something somebody else has written and made available to you for usage in your code. Now, it's very, very common to have some type of dependency. And there's also what we call dependency management systems, package managers, things of that nature. These are all terms that are kind of loosely thrown around. Like in Rust, for example, we call them crates, which is just another word for saying it's just a bunch of files that contain code that you can download from the internet. In Java, it's called an artifact for the most part, or a jar file, which is just a package, once again, something, a file that you download from some external source, usually from Maven or the Maven repository, and then basically you use that in your code. And Node, that's where they call them packages. So. These are all different synonyms or like different ways of expressing a dependency. So don't get confused about it. It's all it is, is just code that somebody else wrote that you can use in your project. Now, the things that you need to consider when it comes to dependencies is first and foremost, you need to have some way of tracking the versions that you have in these. So that's extremely important. You see, from experience, I can tell you this. One of the worst things that you can do when you have a lot of dependencies is to allow yourself to have what we call loose versions or range version. Now, these are usually not the sort of things that you find as an, to be an issue in... In some languages, it's an issue and some uh, there, there's not much of an issue. Now, Node and NPM packages are probably the biggest culprits when it comes to this. I will tell you, as a professional who's been doing this for a few years, always use strict versions when you can on your third-party dependencies. The reason why you want to use third make sure that you have exact versions is because whenever you install that application that you are you're building onto somebody else's computer or somebody's computer and you pull down all your dependencies. Now think about this in theory. If you have made sure that you always have the exact same version of the dependencies that you are depending on. In other words, it's the same code every single time you pull down. Then, in theory, you are always going to be fine. Like, there's never going to be an issue with you because it's always the same code. But if you have a range version, and sometimes it's version 1, and sometimes it's version 1.1 or 1.2, there, even though the maintainers of these, these packages or these dependencies may be very good very professional and make sure that they are following adhering to good practices when they release software there's always a room for some type of issue that there's some type of version issue and that's where you that's why you want to have strict versions because you want to be sure that when you install dependencies that you always get the same dependencies because if they are ranging and sometimes there's one version and sometimes there's another version that becomes an issue just trust me on this. Always try to have specific versions. And then the next thing is, never ever allow anybody to tell you that it's a good idea to automatically update your, your package versions or things of that nature. Updating versions on your third-party dependencies is something that you should do manually. You should do it carefully and with a lot of control and a lot of testing. Because trust me, when I say that the odds of you breaking your entire code base when you have a big dependency, some big library that you use all over in the code, and you upgrade that to a new major version of something of that nature, the odds of things going wrong is extremely high. It's the same thing that you have to consider when you upgrade your working environment. Just a good rule of thumb is change introduces risk. Always, just always. Now, change isn't bad, it's just that you have to control it. You always have to know what it is you're changing and make sure that you have a methodical way of upgrading things. Now, what I do when I upgrade my dependencies is this very simple thing where 
I have a dependency that I know that I want to upgrade and then I simply do the upgrade and then I test run, run all my tests I use the application again and just make sure that nothing broke and when that one dependency is upgraded I go over to the next one and next one and next one I never upgrade all of the things at the same time because the odds of something going wrong or some breaking change being introduced is very high and if I upgrade everything at the same time it's very hard for me to determine what broke and why now, that's the main thing to think about when it comes to dependencies. The second thing to think about when it comes to dependencies is that the more dependencies you, you have, the likelier you are to have issues. Because remember, most of these packages and dependencies are made by different people, which means that if you have all these things that just right now, in this moment in time, are working very, very well together, remember that as time progresses and as these dependencies get upgraded and they get new features and so forth, you are still getting that to your project. So it's theoretically, or rather, it's not just theoretically, it's actually by experience I can tell you that it's very often that some package stops being incompatible with another package. And those things start to be, you have to start adding dependencies just to make sure that these things work. A good rule of thumb is that you should keep your dependencies as few as possible. Try to depend only on the things that you really need in order to do your job. A good example of a good dependency is, for example, a web framework, an MVC framework. These are things like, say, in PHP, Laravel, or in, in Java, Spring, Spring Boot, Express sales whichever or whichever one you need to depend on to do your like routing logic and all of that good stuff in the different in the different languages ruby on rails that's also a good one so these are why the, these are good dependencies is because it would take you way too much time to build it yourself and it's very well maintained it's holistic you don't have to worry so much about upgrades and so forth because it's, it's a very stable, safe bet to have. But small little packages that some random person made, it's a little bit more dangerous. And trust me when I say, it's always an issue over time when, depend like, not in the beginning, it's not, it never happens day one, but it happens in, after six months or two years or three years. And trust me when I say, it actually costs you a lot of time and effort to maintain all your dependencies. So just try to make sure that you only keep depending on the things that you really, really need to save your time and money and so forth. Those are the two main things when it comes to dependencies. But overall, I hope you have some, have some great dependencies and that, as I said, just make sure that you depend on only the things that you really need and have a great day.